the cover's off. Well, kinda. Doesn't look very appetizing, does it? That is the water pooling in the passenger foot well that we saw a little while ago. And I said the last time I'd held some stuff back. Well, this is it. There's damage in the door post below the A pillar just aft of the bulkhead. And of course, it's ridiculously tricky to get to. I can't repair this without taking the dashboard out. Starting with this little finishing trim, then onto the wood fascia. This is held in by a row of screws top and bottom, but the top ones are behind the air vents. Now these pull out from the top. There are spring clips along the top, so there's given them, but the ones at the bottom are solid. So you tease these out top first, and behind them are more screws holding the upper edge of that wooden trim panel. There are two behind each vent. With that pulled out, you can release some electrical connections and it's free to be moved out of the way. Now the air conditioning unit is housed behind all of that, and there are three 10 mil nuts that secure it to brackets on the bodywork. That whole aircon and vent system are also held up by the center console. That is the fuse box and an array of switches located in it, as well as the heater controls. Somebody's been at these heater controls. One of the little illumination bulb holders is a little bit the worse for wear. It has been tacked on with some duct tape. Replacing that's a simple job, but not for now. The switch array is held in just with push fittings. So you just pull that to tease it out. And with the center console out of the way, the whole vent and aircon system has enough slack in its lines to be eased out and dropped onto the floor. There are a few electrical connections, just one or two, that I released to give myself more space with the grinder and then I just got straight into cutting out all the rot. So there's three layers here in this door post. There's the post itself and the backing plate on that forms the middle layer and then is itself backed onto the kind of kick panel that runs aft of the bulkhead. And what was happening here is the moisture was getting behind the front wing and seeping in behind the sandwich of metal and it just rusted out. So we have to make first a repair for the backing plate because all I want to do now, main priority is to get the cabin of this car watertight. There's nothing worse than a car that's constantly full of condensation. I gave that a lick of paint on primer and then fabricated a plate to go over that to complete the kick panel. And yes, we've got some messy welds here, but the construction is back to the way it was from the factory. And I let some spot welds in from the outside to reinforce the join between the door post and its backing plate. And we've got a good strong repair. So straight over to the driver's side. Now you notice there's a little bracket on this panel that I'm cutting out. We do have to replace that. It's one of two brackets that locates a trim panel that covers all of this. And we'll get to that in a second. This is exactly the same process. Again, the driver's side of this car was way worse than the passenger side. And I'd love to know why. All the way down the driver's side, there is just much more corrosion and signs that it dealt with a lot more salt. Now overnight there was a very heavy shower of rain and the water was definitely getting into the car but deep in the footwell where the water was being caught before running down the inside of the kick panel it was bone dry. So jobs are good and then all that's left to do is to put those two little brackets for the trim panel back in. I rescued them from the metal we cut out and it wasn't too difficult to measure up and place them. Now a lick of top coat later all of the dashboard can go back in. And I did this confident that it was the right time to do it, but you'll see in a bit, no, it wasn't. Now the showery weather that we've been having, it also exposed another issue and something I was really keen to get sorted out, which is I had now created a water trap in the rear of the car with those two new lips for the boot seals. So let's get the lower tailgate on. The hinges on these late cars were sprung to make it easier to lift the lower tailgate. I got this one wrong the first time round, so a little tweak and that's much better. The springs extend towards the center of the rear cross member and are anchored there, but they curl around the hinge itself to put pressure on it. 
and its natural relaxed position is closed. So when you open it, you're putting tension on the springs. Now I'm just using a couple of self-tapping screws with flanged heads on them that I found in the shed. There's no real pressure put at this end of the spring. It's just to locate it to stop it from flapping around. With the hinges on, in goes the new rubber seal and on goes the lower tailgate. And it's looking a bit dull around the number plate, but it doesn't look terrible. And that color difference around the Vogue SE decal, it kind of softened out, it's very hard to see. I'm hoping I can polish the lacquer on the lower section of this, the section that I sprayed, and maybe it'll come up a bit better. Whatever, the tailgate itself is operating beautifully and there's kind of a satisfying clunk when you close it too. But we do have an issue. Our seal is not meeting the tailgate and I spent quite a while trying to figure out why. It's tall enough, it's as tall as it was on the other car. Then I thought maybe it's just too far in, but I know for a fact that it overhangs the rear cross member to the same degree it did on the old rear cross member. But I got number two persuader out and eased the new lip aft rearward to try and help the seal meet the tailgate. And the situation improved, but we're still not right here. There's something I'm missing. Anyway, the fun and games were curtailed by yet another blast of rain. But it was so good to see water coming off this bottom tailgate and knowing that the car is getting very close to being watertight by itself. And if I dare say so, looking kind of smart too. Okay, let's keep going. Back on it, the next goal is to get the rear quarter panels on, but to do that we need to get the mud flap extensions on because they have these little brackets on them that locate the lower ends of the rear quarter panels. So on those go, no hassle. The sunroof drains are held by some little clips that just run down the inner arch. And then over those, there's a little rubber trim that just makes a very neat seal between the inner arch and the rear quarter panel itself. On the offside, exactly the same thing. You see on both sides there are these bracing bars. You've noticed them being painted in a number of different sequences. They just go on to reinforce those rear mud flap extensions. So here is the offside rear quarter panel, it's the one that has the fuel filler in it. And I had taken the fuel filler out so I could service and paint the neck of the fuel filler because if you remember, it was fairly rusty. It's just rivets that hold that back in. So that's an easy job to do. And you could call that an open and shut case. Oh dear. Hey, don't get in a flap over it. <laughs> Okay, a couple of clips for the sunroof drain, and I'm painting over these because it's really horrible, you know, you do such a nice job painting something and then you realize that, you know, some little clip like this is going to undermine the paint job. This is where the rust is going to start from. Now, on the fuel filler neck, there is an earth. Again, we've got to undermine our nice paint job by scratching back a little bit to give electrical connection here. A lick of paint later and it should be okay. Lastly, wiring. On both sides, the wiring comes through the inner rear panel. On the near side, there's more because it sends wiring to the fuel pump and the fuel tank, as well as the rear lights. And on the off side, it has the rear lights and the towing loom. And with the wiring out, enter rear quarter, located by two bolts at the bottom of the seat pillar. Four bolts inside the car underneath the rear window and some rivets tucked away in the rear panel itself. The exhaust obviously I set without having these panels on and it's a little bit too high, but that's an easy fix. It just release the U-clamp, pivot the exhaust around just slightly and then retighten. Next target, doors. The seals go in. It isn't as simple as it looks because I didn't have the right tool that would allow me to take the hinges off from the B pillars rather than from the doors. There are thick metal reinforcing bars that are threaded for the hinges that sit inside the door frame, but they're loose, of course they are, and you can't get your hand up in behind to locate them by hand. So the way I did it was, I used a telescopic magnet to get the reinforcing plate in far enough that I could see it from outside the door frame, and then I located it with a piece of wire, just enough to hold it while you offer the door up and get at least one of the hinge bolt started. The same thing on the other side. There are a few little jobs like running the door loom back into the B pillar, 
and getting the pin back into the check strap and the rear doors are mounted. The front doors go on much easier. They're far easier to release from the A-pillar rather than take the hinges off the doors. And the trick here is to close the door because with the front wings off, you can get at the hinges no problem with the door closed. And that means you're not trying to hold it up. I did this all by myself. You don't need two people to put the doors on. Yes, it would be a lot easier, but in a pinch, it's doable on your Todd. If there ever was a mojo builder, it's seeing three quarters of your car that's been stripped for three years back in one piece. And the bumper's on the rear bumper, but I just couldn't help myself. I was kind of testing to see how our North American spec Land Rover tow hitch would sit with the Range Rover bumper. It's sitting fine. The car is looking great. This side, the near side, slightly undermined by that rear door pinstripe. The door was replaced at some point and obviously the car came off was the same color, but the pinstripe wasn't quite in the same place. So onto the final quarter, the front end of the car. And as I pulled the cover off and I saw those big bright headlights, which I think were replaced recently enough, I started to get very excited. You can see underneath the cover, I had this piece of plastic taped to the windscreen because water was coming down the central tunnel from somewhere on the scuttle. And I knew the scuttle needed some attention, but as far as I was concerned, all it needed was to be de-rusted, seam sealer pulled out, new applied, and then a good old lick of paint. So I stripped it back, I took the hinges off. What you're looking at here are resistors for the heater. These are fairly formidable hinge springs, but they're actually not difficult to get off at all. So don't be afraid of them. The wiper mechanism. And then I got the wire bush in there and Christ on a bike. You know what I was saying about it was too early to put the dashboard back in? Yeah, here's why. And am I wrong or is this thing winking at me? And as I stared at this, I mean, this is one of those things that I was caught off guard and I just stood staring for quite a while and going away and coming back and what am I gonna do? And then I realized there is only one way of doing this right and that is to pull the bonnet hinge mounts out of this scuttle so that we can properly repair. And that's what I did. And you know what? Once I'd got the first one done, I realized this is not a difficult thing. And I had a little celebratory swing out of it. Offside. This is the issue with the dash being in the car. There are large pieces of jute directly behind this scuttle, in behind the dash. You know the stuff, the fibrous stuff that used to be used as sound deadening or insulation and it's always incredibly dry. I mean, if it's dry, and it is just like kindling, you know, sitting there waiting to catch fire. Now, what I did was once I'd opened up the rust holes, I took the jute back as best I could, and I managed to do all of the repairs on the near side without causing a fire. And I actually got the offside one finished, constantly watching inside the car for smoke forward and back, forward and back, keeping an eye on what was going on, and everything seemed fine. I finished this job just around lunchtime. Luckily, I had the presence of mind to hang around a bit because two or three minutes later, smoke started to appear in the cabin of the car. The little trick, this is actually how I wash windows. It's a very water efficient way. It's just a, a washing up liquid bottle top on a water bottle. And it means that you can direct a stream of water at obviously a non-electrical fire very accurately. And I put that fire out very quickly. I, you know, it's worth saying, I had to squirt water up underneath the dashboard where all the wiring is. So a lot of the wiring got wet, but it wasn't a lot of water. I mean, a wiring loom will put up with a lot worse than that. So with the panels underneath the bonnet hinges sorted, there's just the center section of the scuttle to do. And it turned out to be worst of all, not least because it's very, very inaccessible. And I have to say, at this point, the front end of this car needs to be replaced. The whole front end of this car. Not the bulkhead, but it certainly needs some repairs. 
And the only way I could do this was to repair over the damage. Cut out the rust, obviously, but repair over the damage and wait for another day when I do do the front end because it's not happening this time. There is a bit of life left in it yet, but I'd have to pull the engine and gearbox out, or certainly the engine, to fix this scuttle properly. I am now concerned only with making sure we're not taking on water into the cabin. I made a three piece repair just because there's so many compound curves here. There was no way of doing it in one and in that went. Now I paid very close attention to trying to make sure these wells are continuous and don't have any little pinholes in them. I think we got away with it, but this is going to get a layer of primer, a squeeze of seam sealer, more primer, and at least one top coat, probably two, which should keep us in good stead for quite some time. And our scuttle is looking a damn sight healthier than it did before. So it's time for the paint. So we'll give that a layer of primer in case it rains. And we move on to the near side inner arch. And in the front of this, there was some rot that I hadn't taken care of. This is part of the reason I'm saying that I want to put a whole new front end on this car. It just, it's not too far gone to live another day, but it's too far gone for me to be happy with it long term. I don't want a car that's full of all these wells. With the back end, at least, by comparison, let's say per square foot, there are far less patches. And if there was something that I could actually fabricate the whole piece of, I did. I didn't just patch it like the rear boot rails. But this front end, it's like a quilt. I repaired that front section of the inner arch, like for like, and then I primed it. But you'll see in these sections, there are some areas large areas kind of far in on the inner arch that still hold a very fresh layer of under seal and like i say all of this is going to get replaced at some point in the not too distant future so i'm not getting into trying to make these panels perfect in fact i consider both of these inner arches a waste of paint but i am going to paint them because we do want to get at least a couple of months and maybe a year or two out of them I'm certainly not getting into stripping back every last square inch of under seal and old paint, not where it isn't needed. And that might seem to go against the rest of the build, but like I say, this front end's days are numbered. And you can buy a whole new front end for one of these things. Inside these panels, by the way, in the very front of the car behind the headlights, are two battery trays. You can run dual batteries on these things very easily. Up top on this arch, this is obviously the main structural beam of the body on this car. Again, rotted out, and it has these clips let into it all along its top edge. These are what hold a bracket that holds the outer wing. Now, have a look at this top replacement panel that I made. You see there's a little triangular notch out of it. The reason that that is there is because that eight foot by four foot sheet of 1.25 mil mild steel that I've been using to fabricate parts is almost non-existent and I had to get creative to get a long enough section to do this repair. So a sexy layer of primer on the offside and then we're into sealing all of our little seams. Now a lot of this section is sped up. This doesn't happen nearly as quickly, not when you're doing it conscientiously but it's just a good even bead forced into all of the little seams and joints here. And you'll see it's very neat wherever the panels are in neat order. Obviously it gets a bit ripply where it has to run over wells, but between the paint and this seam sealer, we should be good and watertight. I've also run it in over those outrigger panels underneath the foot wells in the front. And after 24 hours to let that sealant set, we can hit the whole front end with a black overcoat. Now this is the first layer, we're gonna hit a second layer, but once I had done that and it dried overnight, I had to do a test fit with the front end. And this is just a test fit. None of this is bolted on, not even the bumper, it's all just hanging there. It all has to come off for a second layer of paint, 
there are some tweaks and fettles and little bits and pieces that have to be done. The wiper mechanism and the bonnet hinges have to go back into the scuttle. They are hanging in the shed, resplendent, having been prepped and painted. And things are getting really exciting. If I can get this thing through a road word in this test, I will very soon be driving a Range Rover Classic Vogue SE. Now I know you didn't see these panels going onto the car, but that is because this is just a test fit to fettle things like the inner arch liners and stuff like that. So this will all be coming off. One last lick of paint underneath and you will see all that happening. Never fear. While I was cutting out all the rust you saw on this thing, I was throwing it under the car just to keep it out from under my feet. And I caught a glimpse of it yesterday for the first time. The field of strewn debris under there. And I realized that was the last of the welding. I mean, yes, I want to pull this whole front end off. I'm talking about the inner front end, scrap it and put a fresh one on. But that's down the line. For now, this thing is solid and it's safe. And all I'm hoping is to convince the roadworthiness tester that that's the case. And we're gonna see what's happening. Hopefully that will be booked that test within the coming week to 10 days. So keep the fingers crossed. To my new patrons, Alexander Naorniakovsky and Leonard Kinsla, and to all my patrons, thank you so much. If you think you'd like to lend support to the series, check out the link in the description to Patreon and you can check it out there. Love to see you. Okay, I'm gone. I will see you the next time, hopefully behind the wheel. And until then, good luck.